there's a lot that a committed can, committed president can do by executive authority uh, that doesn't necessarily require congressional approval. Uh, and so I think that's where we have the most uh, potential with the Biden-Harris administration. So, so what priorities might we see um, Biden-Harris administration pursuing on nuclear policy? Well, the, th the first two I would put in the category of cleaning up the mess from the Trump administration. Uh, the Trump administration was handed uh, a fabulously good deal on Iran, the Iran nuclear deal handed to it by the Obama administration um, and fumbled it and, and withdrew and things are much worse than they were before. So the Biden administration, Biden-Harris administration needs to get back in to the Iran nuclear deal and work with Iran uh, to come back into compliance. Um, the administration, the uh, president-elect has said he would do that. So this is not an issue that we need to convince um, the new administration to do, but we need to watch and make sure that they do it expeditiously and do it right and make sure that it happens. In the same uh, theme of cleaning up the mess, um, the Biden administration needs to, within two weeks of inauguration, uh, extend the New START Treaty, uh, which is another thing that the Trump administration had plenty of time to do and failed to do. And so when Biden comes in, he will have 16 days um, to extend New START, hopefully uh, without conditions and for the full allowed term of five years, which the Russians have said they're willing to do. Uh, of course, this is the last remaining uh, treaty that limits U.S.-Russian nuclear forces. And so it's essential um, that it get extended. And then to build on that, to go further, because we want to go further. We don't want to stop there. Um, but again, if it's a treaty to go further, then that's going to have problems um, with the Senate that we expect to see. Now, um, just those two things, New START and the Iran deal, getting those back on track would be tremendously important. But I hope you, and certainly not I, would be satisfied with just that. We want to go beyond that. Um, we want to move from sort of getting back to neutral to making forward progress. Um, and so to me, what I'm looking at um, is things that would address the danger uh, that Bill Perry and, wrote, and I wrote about in our new book, uh, the button, addressing the danger of blundering into nuclear war by mistake. Um, and this is what we see, frankly, as the greatest threat facing the United States today, uh, is that there could be a false alarm caused, for example, by cyber attack, uh, and the president would have just minutes to decide whether the attack is real or false, and if he makes the wrong decision, could launch nuclear war by mistake in response to a false alarm. This is certainly something that President Trump could have done, particularly given the fact that he and all presidents have and have had sole authority to launch nuclear weapons uh, with no checks or balances from, from anybody else, uh, not in the administration and not in Congress. Um, and so we want to make sure or push the incoming Biden administration uh, to address and reduce the dangers of blundering into nuclear war. So there's three things in particular uh, uh, that we would like to see the new administration do. One would be ending sole authority. In other words, uh, the, the authority to use nuclear weapons first should be shared with Congress. Uh, there should be no sole presidential authority for first use. Uh, and we should also uh, prohibit first use in, in a blanket way. Um, and this is something that there is some hope for uh, the Biden campaign and uh, Vice President Biden himself at the time spoke in favor of the sole purpose of nuclear weapons. In other words, the sole purpose of nuclear weapons should be to deter their use by others. To me, this is very close to a no first use um, announcement, and we need to work with the new administration to make sure that a sole purpose policy uh, is equivalent as much as possible to a no first use commitment. Um, and again, that would eliminate the sole uh, authority of the president to use nuclear weapons first, because there would be no, no first use um, allowed. 
And lastly, um, we need to retire the weapons that are most vulnerable to being used first or being used under pressure of a false alarm. And that is our land-based ballistic missiles, our ICBMs. Um, these weapons are not needed for deterrence. Um, we don't need them in particular because we have uh, our nuclear weapons based as well on submarines at sea and on bombers that can be sent aloft. Um, and so not only are the ICBMs um, redundant, but they're, they're tremendously dangerous because the Russians know exactly where they are. They're on high alert and they are the weapons uh, that the president would be under tremendous pressure to use in a alert situation uh, out of fear that if uh, a nuclear attack lands, then those weapons will be destroyed. So there's pressure to use them or lose them before an attack arrives. And that's where you get the danger of responding to a nuclear attack that turns out to be false and starting nuclear war by mistake. Um, this is a particularly important issue too because the Air Force is in the process of a $260 billion program to rebuild the ICBMs. Um, and now is the time to cancel this program before it becomes too big to fail. So, so me personally, this is the highest priority thing uh, and for plowshares, this is the highest priority target we're going after is canceling uh, the new ICBM program uh, because now's the time to do it. Uh, if we don't do it now, we'll be stuck with these weapons for the next 50 years. Um, and there's a real, uh, and they play a, a significant role in the risk of, uh, of blundering into nuclear war by mistake. Um, lastly, I wanna talk about some of the lessons that we learned in the Obama administration, right? Um, President Obama came in so many years ago with great hopes um, of eliminating nuclear weapons and reducing nuclear threats. He got some of those things done, but not near all of them, uh, in part because when he came in, um, the interest in, interested public felt that he had this, right? He had it covered. And so they could go off and worry about other things. And, and that was a problem because um, there wasn't enough public support in Congress or in the general public um, to give President Obama the political capital he needed to get these things done. And when he came into office, he realized just how hard it is to take on the nuclear bureaucracy. So we need to not make that mistake again. I mean, look, we've done the most important thing. Job one, elect a president that cares about these issues. Okay, done. We, we got that. But we have to... Uh, engage, the public needs to engage with that president to make sure they deliver uh, on the things they need to do. The way I look at it is that, you know, the Biden-Harris administration is coming in with clear priorities, fix the economy, fix COVID-19, take on climate change, address racial injustice. All of those things are tremendously important. They're going to take a boatload of money. At the same time, we can't just print all that money because the Republicans are now, my prediction, are going to rediscover uh, the problems with deficit spending, uh, which they forgot about for the last four years. Um, so we won't be able to just rank up the debt as we have. We'll have to cut programs to pay for new programs. Well, from my perspective, where we have money to save is in the nuclear program. Um, we have a, the, the Trump administration was, is planning to spend upwards of $2 trillion to rebuild the arsenal over the next 30 years. We can save a lot of money from that. In particular, the $260 billion for the new ICBM. So I want to take that $260 billion for the new ICBM and give it to rebuilding the economy, give it to addressing COVID, to addressing racial injustice and climate. So I want to build a coalition, a campaign with other communities that need federal funds because we've got in the nuclear space federal funds to give away.